he finds what appears to be an ideal spot to rest before his final push to the mating grounds. However, from within the dense forest he is being watched by relatives of the raptors. These, though, are birds, flying dinosaurs that share the same ancestors as the carnivorous raptors. Instead of scales, they have evolved feathers which cover their bodies and turn their arms into wings. At this time of year, they have eggs to protect, and the presence of the intruder sets off a chain reaction of aggression. Next to the Ornithochirus, the birds look no bigger than insects. However, their tiny feathered wings are more resistant to damage than the skin membrane of the pterosaur, especially among the branches and twigs of dense forests. In the far future, the pterosaurs will surrender the skies to the birds. Driven on, he eventually reaches the huge island of Cantabria, which will one day be the bedrock of Spain. He is exhausted by his 14,000 kilometer journey. Ahead lies the mating ground. Every year of his adult life, he has returned to this same spot to mate. Already the beach is full of male Ornithochirus noisily competing for space. As the old male approaches, he knows from experience that the nearer the center of this intimidating throng, the more attractive he will be to the females. He heads straight for the dominant position he has occupied in previous years, right in the middle. But this time, he faces a challenge to his supremacy. Again and again he tries to land, but the males on the ground fend him off. Eventually his weariness tells and he has to land elsewhere. His position among the males has been usurped by younger animals. They advertise their vigor and size to warn off rival males and to attract females out of the air. For the outcast, the world has been turned upside down. Now banished to the outskirts of the mating area, he will be lucky to attract a female at all. In the blistering heat of midday, his instincts force him to keep trying. The females are unmoved. center of the beach. A female has just landed and now submits herself to a male who flashes his red crest to impress her. Mating itself is brief. Afterwards the male will resume displaying in the hope of attracting yet more females. The female herself will now leave.
Three days later, and at last the breeding site is emptying of males. It is still fiercely hot. Our Ornithochirus has yet to mate. Worse still, his fruitless exertions under the blazing sun have taken a heavy toll. Heat stress and lack of food have all but killed him. The king of the skies has lost his majesty. His life has run full circle. In his time he traveled the globe, but death finds him here, in the very same place where he first mated some 40 years ago. On the beach around him are others who lost out in this struggle to reproduce. But nature is seldom wasteful. They have become food for the next generation. Pterosaurs continued to rule the skies for millions of years, while on land, the dinosaurs spread to every part of the globe. In the next episode, we will see how they even conquered the most extraordinary environment of all, the dark forests of the South Pole.